Joining us on Blue Notes today, we have Martin Joy, Senior Manager, Global Regulatory Change Group Risk from ANZ, and his colleague, uh, Kim McGrath, Manager, Enterprise Regulatory Change Group Risk. Now, the titles may sound a bit banky, but in fact, you're a really fascinating area, which is behavioural economics. It's becoming much more important, Martin, across the whole financial services sector and in fact regulators are now very interested in it aren't they? Yeah absolutely Andrew. Um, what we're seeing is regulators um, overseas um, like the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK um, and our own ASIC use behavioural economics to inform their both their regulatory policy so what the regulatory settings are, the rules they write, the rules they try to enforce as well as how they approach their supervision. Um, so the way they critique our offerings and our communications. It's becoming a really interesting and powerful way for them to look at financial services regulatory problems. And so presumably it's something that institutions now globally have got to be thinking about as part of how they, what, inform customers, construct products? Yeah, yeah so we, we need to be responsive to what the regulators are saying, um, you know, responding to both the new rules that are coming out, but it's being driven by behavioral economics, but also starting to respond to you know, their critiques of um, you know, how we should be talking to our customers, what type of products we should be putting out there. Um, for example, you know, some competitors of ours are putting out apps based on behavioural economics, which is really interesting. And Kim, uh, the app is a really good example, but can you give us some other concrete examples of how this behavioural economics is rolling out and, and how you know, governments are using them or banks are using yeah, them? Yeah, absolutely. So in the public policy space, and I can give you a UK example, with the UK tax office, we're looking at a way in which they can increase tax uh, repayments on time. And so what they did was leverage what we call social norms. And the idea is that you know, we're influenced by how other people behave. So the tax office uh, inserted a line that nine out of 10 customers pay their taxes on time. And that resulted in a 15 point increase in people paying their taxes. So, so that's enough, just putting that line people paid more. And I think that's just why uh, behavioural economics is really um, enticing to regulators and to governments because it really feeds into that deregulation context. You know, you can make a small change and have huge impacts without using prescriptive laws and regulation. Um, and here at ANZ, um, we ourselves started to use behavioural economics. Um, we've worked on a customer remediation letter and we looked at how, how can we improve that letter to make it um, easier for people to understand the letter and improve participation rates. And the, the essence of that is, is what, more simple language? Or Absolutely, making the letter simpler, easier to understand, um, highlighting losses, uh, because people respond to losses more than gains. And the pain of losing something is greater than the gain of winning something. So we use a number of techniques in, in the way we construct letters um, to get the outcome we want to achieve. Martin, can we, uh, expect this to become much more sort of uh, pervasive through financial services do you think behavioral economics you know for regulators for institutions yes i think it's here to stay um, you know we're seeing recently the treasury um, and that, you know, put out a consultation paper on credit cards and that draws heavily on behavioral insights the uh, recent financial system inquiry also drew heavily on behavioral insights it's becoming a real organizing force and philosophy behind regulation um, so you know i don't see it going away in the near term well, look, uh, we'll take that on inside on board. Thanks very much, and thanks both for joining Blue Notes. Thanks, Andrew.